Alright, hey everybody. I am I started a little bit early, like a minute or two earlier, because I want to get I'm Orletha Smith, by the way. <laughs> I wanted to get um, a couple of things out of the way because I don't want to forget them. So today I am going to be doing a batch cook from Mickey Trescott's The Autoimmune Paleo Cookbook. So um, I put the link in the little chat somewhere in there. I'm really, Google, Google Plus keeps changing on me, so I'm trying to make sure that I got it right. If, um, I also wanted to give people a few seconds to get in from the other Hangout, because I set it up, and then I made it private, so kind of weird. But I got that um, link, this link over there. Hopefully everybody gets here and forgives me. Um, so big, big thanks to Mickey for allowing me to use her recipes today. Um, I am going to be checking them here on my little tablet because I don't have them memorized. So I'll be looking at your awesome recipes. So today I will be preparing garlic sage chicken patties, but I'm going to make them into meatballs because it's super easy to pop those in the oven while I'm doing everything else and then have them throughout the week as I um, have them for dinner. I'm also going to be doing the Asian marinated grilled chicken and I'm going to use chicken wings and so that way they can marinate and I can put those in the oven this week too whenever time calls for those. And I'm going to be preparing lemon garlic marinated chicken breast and also a stir fry, her chicken stir fry. And then my own recipe this time around, oh that went way too fast. My own recipe this time around is um, I'm going to be doing a Kahlua pork. So if you have questions, today my husband is manning the computer. Hey Chris. Hey. So if you have questions, feel free to type them in the Q&A. If you want to chat, feel free to chat. Mickey is hanging out. Thank you, Mickey, for hanging out to answer any questions. If I can't answer them, I know she can answer them. So feel free to ask away. We are here and willing to answer your questions. All right? So it's 431 now. I'm going to go ahead and get started because I'm pretty sure I can get this done in 30 minutes. Ready? I'm going to start with... I make a list, of course, because it's part of the batch cookery. Um, I create a list of to-do lists for my prep day to make it go faster. So it's hanging out on my refrigerator over here, which you probably can't see because I don't want you to see the dirty pantry. <laughs> so, it's not dirty. It's messy. But it's on the refrigerator, and the first thing that I need to do is prep the Kahlua pork, so I'm going to get started there. What I do is I put the whole Kahlua pork in the crock pot. It's so easy. Is I put that shoulder in the crock pot. Salt it, liquid smoke, start, meal number one is done. This also is one of the few meals that got me back on pork because I am not a fan of pork. I know. I like bacon, but who doesn't? Bacon and ham. But pork chops? Not so much. My poor husband. He used to love pork chops. <laughs> that was him making that weird noise with you. You heard him. It was him protesting about pork pork chops that he doesn't get anymore. Will you be sharing your recipes in a printable format somewhere? So um, I can share Kahlua with you, but the other is and they're in her AIP book. And it's like I said, it's really great, the, the autoimmune um, cookbook, the autoimmune paleo cookbook. So those you can pick up. Um, I have a link somewhere there. If not, I will shoot that over to you so that you can um, download that one. And that one right now is hanging out on my tablet, which is what I have sitting there so that I can reference. Now the Kahlua pork is, I swear, it's got to be the easiest meal ever. If you are pinched for time and you're like, oh my gosh, what are we going to have for dinner? This one, have your nice little shoulder roast like I did with my scissors. And then you rub um, I use red Hawaiian salt, but you can use black or whichever one you want. But I rub it down a little bit, a little bit of salt. And now some liquid smoke. And done. Now I'm going to do is set it and forget it. Corny? Okay, sorry. Definitely not corn on paleo. So I will that for three hours per pound. That roast happened to be um, two pounds. 
And I will go ahead and set that as soon as, wait a minute, set it on the two pounds, six hours. There we go. All right. Wash my hands. Keep going. I'm not. What to do next? So I'll look at my handy dandy list. So next up, we are going to start chopping vegetables. Now, I always say chop your vegetables first because that always takes the longest. I swear it takes forever to chop vegetables. So I am going to start with my cabbage because it takes up the most space and takes the longest time. Cabbage. Cabbage is also one of my favorite vegetables because a little bit goes a really long way. So if you're trying to um, save money, cabbage has got to be my favorite vegetable to do that. You can probably get a good two meals out of this <laughs> one head of cabbage. And um, serve it with ground beef, um, ground turkey, ground chicken, definitely a dollar stretcher here. Cut that horrible, well not horrible, some people actually like it. I'm not a fan of that core thing. <laughs> so I cut it out. Now what I'm using this for is for my um, stir fry, Mickey stir fry. So I'm just going to go ahead and slice my cabbage. This is the way I like it. Some people like it even bigger. Totally up to you. I like it like that. Grab my stir fry bag so I can start putting those up away as I chop. Put it in the bag. already got it labeled, don't forget to label your bags with um, the date and what's in it because uh, especially some weeks I some things will come up and either A, I don't get to cook the meal that I thought I was going to cook, so I have to put it in the freezer. Now, I don't know about you, sometimes I go in the freezer, if it doesn't have a name on it, I have no idea what it is. I have to thaw it and then like play guess the food. You know, but I'm not going to throw it away. So easiest way to prevent playing guess what's in the freezer is to label your bags. Another way, um, th another thing that I like to do is once I have the meal done, once I have it prepped or cut up and everything's together and in the freezer, I write them down on my refrigerator. So I use a dry erase board and write them over there. As I use it, I just kind of actually look cool here. I'll show you Target. Who doesn't love Target, right? So it's just a little dry erase board. This little guy is a magnet. Ooh, a magic. And uh, I just write it on there. As I use it, whack it off. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is cut up my broccoli. Now, another dollar stretching tip is to buy broccoli crowns. Of course, I could have purchased the florets. But guess what? Florets cost more. These actually, we I think I calculated they were on sale at Sprouts this week. And so they were... 49 cents on sale, 49 cents a pound. So I ended up spending like 95 cents for two pounds of broccoli. And all I'm going to do is, is rinse it and cut off the florets. And now I have two pounds of broccoli florets for less than a plus. Now I looked at the bag to see how much the bag was going to cost, run me. And the bag was actually $2. So it may not seem like much, but every dollar counts. This is just for me. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to cut those little florets off, pop them in the bag with my stir fry. Oh, 
my family loves, especially my son, he loves broccoli. So I add a lot. Now, Mickey's recipe calls for mushrooms. My husband hates mushrooms. Mm. I don't know what's wrong with them. So, uh. therefore, <laughs> you can hear me in the background. So that's why he doesn't get pork chops. I don't get mushrooms, you don't get pork chops. It's a wash. No, it's not. <laughs> All right, so that last step on the stir fry is onions. Now, if you don't know, every time that I try, I cut up onions. First time I did this, I did put a call out. I'm like, hey, if anybody knows how not to cry with onions, let me know. And I got a bunch of responses. The one that worked is vinegar. Now, I don't know if you've heard this, but vinegar saves my life. You just put a little, not my life, but it saves my eyes. Put a little splash of it, and it doesn't affect the taste of your food, I promise. Would you but say that was about a tablespoon, maybe? A tablespoon. Maybe a tablespoon, maybe. And uh, I just, now I don't have little crying eyes and running faces. That doesn't make sense. Now I don't have running eyes. <laughs> so it makes it a little bit easier. However you like to cut your onions up for your stir fry, totally up to you. I am going to cut this into chunks because my daughter does not like onions. So it just makes it easy to pick them out for her. I love them. Some love them. Husband can tolerate them. So whatever works for you. Now I also need about a fourth of a cup of this onion for another recipe. So what I'm going to do in case you don't know, an onion is about a cup, give or take, so I'm going to take a fourth of this and use it for another recipe. I'm going to set it to the side for another recipe. Put that right there. And I'm just going to cut that one up in pieces that she will be able to pick out. My onions, I've got my broccoli. <laughs> I just need to throw some carrots in there. And I've got all my vegetables cut up for my stir fry. Now, in Mickey's recipe, she uses cooked chicken. So I am actually going to cook the chicken fresh when it's time to make this recipe. And chicken doesn't take that long to cook. It's a chicken that she, her recipe doesn't take that long to cook. So I am going to do that on the day of. But what took the longest would be these vegetables. They always take forever. That's why I tell everybody to do them first. Now I am going to cut up my carrot for the same recipe. <laughs> and voila, I have all my vegetables cut up for the stir fry. So, according to my list, I have put the Kahlua pork in the crock pot. I've cut up my cabbage, my broccoli. I've sliced my onion. I need to chop that last piece of onion for the garlic sage chicken meatballs. And then I need to grind my chicken breast, juice some lemons, make some meatballs. Turn on the oven. Hey, you know what? I should turn on the oven. <laughs> I'm going to make the meatballs in the oven. <laughs> So I'm going to do that. Um, now, for the next recipe is to chop an onion. So I'm going to chop this onion, and I'm going to put it to the side. Again, I still have a little bit of vinegar there. So I'm going to get, grab a jar, a jar, a glass um, bowl so I can put the onion in when I'm done. I am utterly amazed that there's only been one question. Oh, one question? That's because everybody there is like, look, we already know how to do this. That's cool. 
Just so you do know, though, if you're like, man, I really want to learn that, I have a free video that teaches you how to um, batch cook on thebatchcookery.com. So you can just go through the whole video series, and I teach you how to get organized so that you can do this yourself, and you don't have to wonder how to get organized. So check that out. Again, batchcookery.com. It's also under my name down there. I put it there in case you do want to learn how to do this. I'm willing to share. I also answer any questions that you have regarding freezing or batch cooking or getting your to-do list together because I think that's the biggest thing. Like people always say, oh, I already know how to batch cook. Yeah, I'm sure, but do you know how to make sure that you can get in and out of the kitchen quickly because that to me is the biggest um, takeaway when you are trying to do a batch cook is trying to get in and out of the kitchen quickly. All right, so got the onion chopped. Got the now I'm going to grind my chicken thighs and breast. Now I don't know if you knew this, but you can grind your own meat. I'm sure you didn't know that, but you can do it yourself. To me, it's a lot easier. Plus, I get a better consistency when I grind my own meat. So right now, I am going to take my ninja. Um, and throw in a chicken breast, uh, two thighs, two thighs and two breasts, and then uh, grind that up. I'm also going to then take a look at the recipe and just throw everything in together. Makes time, saves some time. I'm going to have to cut this up. It's a little bit big. So I'm going to, you can't, I don't think you can see me right now. But we can see you, but we can't see what you're doing. You can see me, but not around there. Okay, so I'm cutting up chicken to throw it in this in the uh, ninja because it's too big, and I don't want to sit there forever. Voila. All right, so. I cut up chicken. I think that's good. And I'm going to wash my hands. I got chicken juice all over them. That's kind of gross. Alright, so I've got about, I don't know, a little bit of chicken in there. See, I've cut it all up. And I'm going to take a look at Mickey's recipe and see what else needs to go in there because I'm just going to toss it all in the food processor and go from there. I need onion that I just cut up, four cloves of garlic, sage, salt, already got the meat in there, four cloves, one, two, three, four, I like garlic, there we go. <laughs> I'm using sage. Now Mickey's recipe calls for um, some calls for fresh sage. They didn't have any when I went to Farmer's Market, so I'm going to use dry sage in its place, just in case you're wondering what the heck that is. Dry sage. Throw some salt in there. It says I need a teaspoon of salt pepper, so I'm going to throw some salt in there. And grind it up. If you have a ninja or some, I'm pretty sure you figured this out, so feel free to mute. Can you mute the microphone then? Because that's going to be loud. You're, my husband's like, I don't know how to do this. It's a microphone on the top of the screen. Just like mute it. I, this is loud. So I am going to go ahead and get that chicken out of there and use a handy dandy ice cream scoop to, well this is like a cookie dough scooper or something like that, to make the meatballs.
meatballs go so much faster. What size crock pot do you use? Huge. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I think this is an uh, eight quart. It's the eight quart. I have two of them, and I use them simultaneously. Yeah, so I will have that little pork going and a chicken going usually because then I'm done with two meals and don't have to do anything. So I, I like to tell people that there's active time and then there's, you know, passive time obviously. But active time, you can like totally not have to do a lot of, have a lot of active time going while you're in the kitchen. By the way, so if you're trying to figure out what the consistency is of my meat now that I've put it in the food processor, it is just like ground beef, ground meat. So just in case you're wondering or wanted to see it, I have questions like that usually. It's usually me asking all the questions. Thank you, Dana, for your questions. <laughs> that was Dana. Hey, Dana. Dana was at the last one when you guys all walked through. You were hanging out watching football. Today my friends are at home cooking, uh, and they'll be over later. <laughs> so. I just appreciate Dana asking questions, so I'm actually sitting here actually doing something. You are doing something. You're being my support system. You're a great husband. Thanks, great husband. Yeah, I love you too. Now, sometimes the meatballs look kind of funky. Like, there's one that just, I'll just pick it up and fix that. That wasn't right. <laughs> they smell amazing, though. All right, so that one is done. All right, so that is one, two, three meals done. We got two meals left. Ten minutes. See if we can do it. I believe in me. <laughs> All right, so next up is Asian marinated grilled chicken. I said I was going to do um, wings, so I'm going to grab that bag. And if you remember the last time that I told you that I do this, I use my um, other blender. I just take all the sharp stuff out of it because, you know, you don't want to puncture your bag. And I just put my bag in here. Makes it easy to hold all the liquids. I'm going to call a timeout real quick. Um, so Dane is actually asking another question. Yeah. And it's commentary from me on what I think of your food and cooking. Yes. So honest answer is I love it. I come from a family of chefs, so I hold my wife to a very high regard in her cooking. Um, and it's actually gotten me from 230 pounds down to 182 pounds. So all in all, I'm very pleased with her cooking, as well as the food choices. And I not have. because it's bad food. He didn't lose weight because he wouldn't eat. <laughs> no, I lost weight because I actually eat real food, and it's, it's healthy. And so, yeah. I'm happy. <laughs> I'm glad. My kids kind of like my food too. Right, son? Yes. Okay, good answer. See, I got a train. <laughs> oh, hello. Hello. It's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, let's see what else. Ginger. So what I did is I doubled this recipe because I love sauce. So um, I'm going to put that loveliness. And you know what? I think I'm supposed to, um, hold on, hold that off. When you're working with um, recipes, you got to be careful with, your, with reading. <laughs> So, la la la. Yes, I was supposed to put this in a blender. In a blender. Okay, anyway. So, I'm going to put it in my smaller um, container for my ninja. And I'm just going to throw everything in there and let it blend it all up and then pour it over the chicken. So, I need how many cloves of garlic? I'm doubling this one. And a knob of ginger. 
So it says a one-inch piece of ginger. Again, I'm doubling it, so it's going to be a two-inch piece of ginger. Chop it up just so that it makes it a little bit easier. Put that in there. Salt and then the chicken. I'm going to ask my husband to mute the microphone again. So I'm going to put the chicken in the bag, pour the marinade over it. Meal number four is done, and then the last meal is the lemon garlic chicken. All done. I know I'm pretty much off camera right now. Yeah, yeah, I forgot that I was going to have to come way over here. I got an idea. What? Why don't you grab the bowl and chicken, take it back over by the knives, and then you're not off camera. Because I'm already pouring the chicken now. <laughs> the bag in the blender was a standard uh, one-gallon Ziploc freezer bag. Yep. Apologies for the cheap plug of Ziploc. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever bag you want to use. <laughs> but it was just a gallon size bag in a regular old blender. So I just poured the marinade over the chicken wings. Shake, shake, shake. All done. Meal going in the refrigerator. And the last meal Hi, Allison. that I am going to make is the lemon garlic marinated chicken. So I need two lemons juice. So I am going to do that. And I also need two cloves of garlic. Now, the way that I, and it says minced. I am a big fan of a garlic press. If you don't have a garlic press, get one. It's awesome. <laughs> Working out works when you, uh, it's good for you when you are trying to juice lemons. And next up is two cloves of garlic and some fresh parsley. So I will do the same thing that I did with the last one is my gallon Ziploc bag. Right here over my lovely, um, I think this is, it says it's six cups, a six cup um, mixer. I'm going to pour the juice in there. Actually, it's probably easier if I just do that. Flashes of brilliance. <laughs> so, now I need two cloves of garlic. And again, I love garlic. So, I am going to just put that. We have a question from our special guest, Mickey. Hey, Mickey. Do you have a list somewhere with all of the little tools you use? No. I am particularly interested in the ice cream scoop you use to make the meatballs. You know what I'm going to do? Face. I am going to. <laughs> I will put that together today. How about that? I'll put that together, and I will put that on the batchcookery.com, um, and that way everybody has it. Man down. That was me dropping things. Um, I'm pretty sure I didn't put garlic in here. Nope, I didn't. See, I remember things. And it's never too late to put in garlic, trust me. 
<laughs> I just took the chicken wings back out, and I'm throwing in a couple cloves of garlic because I'm I almost sure I didn't, and if I did, was that the one you put in the blender? Yeah. The, the small onion you did, but I'm not mad at garlic. I did. Oh, me either. Though, I'm not mad. We'll just not talk to each other really closely. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> the lemon chicken also needs parsley. And I've got two minutes to see if I can get it done. See if I can chop some parsley in two minutes. And butterfly chicken. Actually, I started a minute late, so I gave myself three minutes. Three minutes to do this. You think I can do it, dear? I know you can do it. You can do it. Ha! Line from the best movie ever. Water <laughs> boy. You can do you it. Can do it. We'll leave the other part out right now. Yeah. <laughs> All, all that garlic you put in there. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Cutting up my fresh parsley because I like parsley too. It's one of my favorites. Really great for chlorophyll. <laughs> this is from a biology teacher. I can't remember. So I'm going to butterfly the chicken and then toss it in there. And... Sea salt, and then that's it. All done. So I'm gonna butterfly chicken. Now I am so. Oh, oh my gosh, goodness. Seriously? I know. Sorry. Whoops. I get all talk, get excited when I talk, and I forget to switch cutting boards. There we go. Sorry, dear. So I will. Um, I'm gonna butterfly my chicken, and I have three chicken breasts here. My kids usually eat. Probably half of one. And then toss it in the bag, salt and pepper it. Actually, I'm going to salt and pepper it when I'm done. Do you use things like ready cut veggies slash peeled garlic? I do. So you'll see I have a huge bag of peeled garlic. Thank you, Costco. So some vegetables, I'm like, I'm not going to pay that. I'm like the broccoli. I'm not going to pay a double more than twice what that broccoli would have been just because, you know, you cut the floret off for me. But if you're going to save me that kind of time, that's a lot of beautiful time saved. Nobody likes peeling garlic. Um, so I definitely use that. I also will use, um, if I'm in a pinch, I'll also use uh, coleslaw for shredded cabbage. That is an amazing I sharp know, knife. I know, I love A good knife is your best friend. I'm sure Mickey can attest. Good night, best friend. <laughs> this is a beautiful night. All right. I'm going to salt and pepper it as soon as I wash my hands, and I'm going to toss it in the back. Hi. Hi. Rafi? Rafi's asking, what are you cooking right now? I am, I just finished up making five um, autoimmune paleo friendly meals, and this one, last one, was lemon garlic chicken from Mickey Trescott's. The autoimmune paleo. Oh, oh, sweet Jesus. It came off. The autoimmune paleo cookbook. Thankfully, you can rinse salt off. But I will uh, rinse that off <laughs> before I put them in the bag. <laughs> oh, I don't act like it hasn't happened in years. <laughs> so, for those of you who could not see, my wife accidentally pulled the sprinkler thing off the salt, and I was going to have salted chicken for dinner. <laughs> you know what? Every time I have this show, I do something that is crazy. Last time I dropped, um, I, like I opened the refrigerator and all of the blood from my ground blood, blood. from my um, ground <laughs> beef just spilled all over the floor. So I was like having to clean that up. That was not fun. So yeah, that it's always something. So I butterflied my chicken. Putting it in the bag. Meals done. Even and with the cleanup. Kelly, you're correct with the amen to peeled garlic. <laughs> peeled garlic, I swear, is the best thing ever. It saves a ton of time. Um, the other, the other thing that I will do is um, I will buy sometimes sliced carrots because flat sliced carrots, especially when I'm using them for something that has sauce, those um, they're like this. Those types of carrots do so much better carrying sauce than mine <laughs> when I cut them up. So I will buy those. 
And I'm going to pass this question over to Mickey. Is the autoimmune uh, cookbook available in print or only in ebook? So I don't know if. Oh, bingo. Thank you, Mickey. All right. So guess what? I got all five meals done in 31 minutes. The meatballs are in the oven. The Kahlua pork is in the crock pot. The lemon chicken, the sage chicken meatballs that are in the oven, the um, what else did we make? Stir fry is in the refrigerator, and so is the Asian marinated chicken wings. So that done in 30 minutes. So when you say, hey, I don't have time to prep, I don't have time to do it, I just got my week done in 30 minutes while the football game's on in the background. So <laughs> you can totally do it. I usually do um, all seven meals in about 45 minutes just for the whole week, including breakfast. So if I were to do sides right now, I would probably pair the Asian marinated chicken with um, a, a, I have a really good cabbage slaw. And I think Mickey in her book has a really, really, really good um, asparagus, lemon asparagus for that lemon chicken that I'm going to have um, this week, that we are going to have this week. Yep, that's what she would pair it with. It says, oh no, it wasn't. It's lemon sauteed green beans. Yum. <laughs> that sounds delicious. <laughs> All right, so I, if you don't have any more questions, or if you do have any questions, feel free to shoot them out there. If you think of some later, you can always email me. I am Orlitha at Gmail, or I am also, actually, find me on Google+, Plus. always hanging out there. Um, so find me over there, and if you have any questions, shoot them over. Thanks. Ha, 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 ha.